Bye bye. Good morning, Jay. Morning. We're miles away. I then. was dreaming about whether we'd got everything and everything was going to be all right. We well, yeah, no, no, it is. <laughs> it is. It's all right. Last minute. Is that close-up camera working? Everything yes, it is. Be all right. Yes, it is. Um, Jane, I'm going to come up and waft a few things with you in a second. Okay. Um, what are we doing today? We're talking a little bit about quilting. And then I'm going to show you how to do reverse binding, which is when you bring the backing fabric to the front. Nice. Which is a nice way of showing off your nice fabrics on the back. If they're part of the collection or they tone nicely. Shall we uh, quote Kaif at this moment in time and say the back of the quilt should be as beautiful as the front? It should, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And we've totally been able to do that with this bundle. We have, yes. We've got some beautiful Beth and Janine fabrics, which... From the same collection, so of course, they look fabulous together. You had a green top on yesterday and you were walking <laughs> and I just caught sight of you and I was like, that looks amazing together. Yeah. Um, such beautiful spring colours in it's these fabrics. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful fabric. Should we have a look? Should, Should we, we go? Just, I know we're going to say hello to everyone, but yeah. I, just, I kind of want everyone to see just how gorgeous this is. And this is the um, fabric that we've used on the front, which is faux hexagons so yeah well that's not faux so, hexagons it's faux piecing because they're real hexagons <laughs> they are but they look like they're pieced hexagons and they're not it's printed fabric which is affectionately known in the industry as a cheats panel which i think is not very fair to the fabulous fabric to be honest but that's what they're called cheats panels when the fabric looks like a pieced quilt yeah and it's really lovely to be able to use this fabric in your project and then you've got your quilt you, you've got lines that you can follow for quilting so as a beginner having a cheats panel is a lovely thing to do to practice your quilting on and it you know it's great for like project like pouches and bags and things like that where you you want to make something that's quite small but you don't you like to have some detail on it sorry it, i'm just sneezing, sneezing. and when your I start... lovely children of have shared their germs, lurgy germs with you. Do you know what? I just... <laughs> I preferred it last night when they came home from cooking club and shared their rock cakes with oh, me. Oh, I bet they were delicious. Do you know what? They were surprisingly good. Yeah. I was... I was... They were... I mean, they weren't dreadful. <laughs> the beauty of this panel is you've got lots of different patterns and fabrics in it. Right. And if you wanted to, there's nothing to stop you cutting these up and making your own hexagons or patchwork panels with them. You could, you oh, could take oh, like on. a whole grandmother's garden part here from your fabric and applique that onto a plain fabric and then quilt it. Or you could just use it as a whole load of hexagons yeah. and get your hexiforms. Yeah, and, and do your own pattern. Oh, that would be a bit... Wouldn't it? Yeah, so there's lots of things that you can do with an already pre-printed panel. And then we've got the beautiful um, fabric that I've used on the back, which has got... It's the Songbird Collection by Beth and Janine for Dashwood. And it's got... It's heavily featured these beautiful birds. There's birds in flight and then there's birds standing on the flower. They're very colourful and um, folk arty. Birds. They are, aren't they're they? Lovely. There's a naivety about it. Yeah, they're gorgeous How? and the lovely colours. Going complete, not completely off topic actually. Have you seen that gorgeous documentary slash film on um, that naive folk artist in America? Who oh had... no, I haven't seen that. Oh, it's really beautiful. Yeah, we'll really, have to see really that. Beautiful. Yeah. Is that on one of the channels or is it? Uh, I think it, I think YouTube I saw it on Netflix. Netflix. Mabel. Yeah, I have to look that up. Look at the salvage. The salvage is just beautiful as well. Do you know, I can salvage. really understand can't see why that, some people just like... collect the salvages. Yeah. This one, isn't it? The one recently we had, was it the Gemma that had got eyes, eyelashes? Yes. It was that gorgeous. was amazing. Yeah, gorgeous. That was really amazing. I'm going to turn my volume down and I'm going to say hello to everybody, Jane. Okay. Whilst we swoon and wit woo over the beautiful fabric. Because we do have people with us this morning. We have got Anne, we've got Oscar, we've got Jimmy. Good afternoon, good evening, Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. Uh, we've got Sue, uh, we've got Joyce. Hello, everyone. And Liz, hello. 
Um, and who else? We've got Julia as well. Oh, Aunt Lisa Crangle's here. Joe's here. Good morning. Good morning. Pat's here. Becky's here. Um, and Liz. Everyone's joining. They're finding oh, that's us lovely. gradually. Um, Genevieve's just joined us. Well, good morning to you. Um, normally, on your shows, we get to the stage where we can't actually... We can't necessarily quilt everything. No. Um, and it's frustrating. It, it can be. And sometimes you'll get a pattern for a quilt and it'll say, quilt as desired. Ugh. And you're just like, well, if you're a beginner, particularly if you're a beginner, you're like, well, what does that mean? Yeah. Because I don't know how to quilt, so what are you telling me? Yeah. Um, and if, even if you're a, you know, an experienced quilter, sometimes you just need a little guidance as what you... Because sometimes the quilt's designed and quilted by the designer and you'll see a beautiful picture of it, yeah. but you won't know what the quilt pattern is. When you did your Kelmscott quilt, yes, which was stunning, yeah. and still one of my all-time favourites, and yet one of the most simple quilts I've ever Yeah, it was quite a classic one, wasn't it? Absolutely. Um, in there, you gave a template for quilting. Yes. And so we, we do regularly... Yes, you know. and I, in my patterns, I try to, to put a li It might only just be one line, but I'll say how I finished my quilt. Yeah. So I'll put quilt as you, as you wish, as desired. I don't think I use as desired. Because it, it, it really annoys me. Yeah. Other people do it. And then I put, <laughs> I put something like, I echo quilted around the squares, and I did this, and I did a little bit of squiggle in this. So people have got an idea of how I finished it, and they can do their own thing as well. Did you um, did you get your thesaurus out so that you, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say as desired. <laughs> I'm going to say something different. Yes. Um, we have got Sue on uh, that there YouTube saying morning. Anne's there. Morning from a chilly, rainy day in Cyprus. Ooh. I once made a hexagon quilt. Took eight months by hand. Brilliant. <laughs> and I did the same. I My know people that are still working on hexagon quilts that they started in the 70s. Because oh, what happened... What happens is people will make a project and then make hexagons from the leftover scraps yes. and then carry it on into... So it's a real memory quilt sometimes. Do you know what? Victoria Peake did that. Every time she did a show at Sewing Quarter, yeah. she saved a scrap and added it into a quilt. Yeah. Um, I made mine all the time. I hand-stitched mine while I was pregnant with Emily. Yes, it's a nice thing to do because yeah. it's, it's mindful. Yes. And paper, pe paper piecing, it's traditionally known as. With hexiforms, obviously, it's not paper and you leave them in. But um, English paper piecing, because they call it English paper piecing because in America they call foundation piecing paper piecing. So they know that it's English paper piecing. My microphone slipped in. I could see Natasha frowning at me. <laughs> Um, I just had a message from Gemma going, there's some buzzing and friction <laughs> on the microphone. It's not ideal. Oh, and bless I'm just her. like, is it mine? Yeah. Is it Jay? It's me. Mine's just slipped inside. It's flimsy fabric. This is what happens, isn't it? Um, so English paper piecing is what it's known as. Yeah. Because Americans use pa say paper piecing for foundation pe piecing. Got it. That's all yeah. this piece. So, and they say wadding. No, hang on. Yeah, what they it? call it batting when we call it wadding. wadding. Yeah, it, it's just those little differences, it isn't is, it? It is, yeah. It can be really confusing for people. But wadding and batting are the same. Yes. Paper piecing in America is foundation piecing. Yeah. And we have English paper piecing where we put the paper in, unless you're using hexaforms, in which case you leave it in. Which is lovely because it wads it at the same time. Which is perfect. Karen says, good morning, ladies. Looking forward to watching live in the midst of packing away some of my stash as getting new units in my, her work and sewing space. So lovely. sitting in chaos, I mean... Yeah, it's a bit like you have to make a mess, don't you, to tidy up. And it, sometimes it's, you get to the really messy bit and you're like, why did I start this? I think that's where we are, Jane. I think we I are. I think that's where we are. We've got all the boxes in now from our warehouse move, which seems to have been the longest move known to man. Yeah. But we keep doing shows and making other mess in between. Yeah, it's, it's an ongoing progress, really. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, yes. Hopefully, now that staticky stuff has stopped. Um, right, so, so we have got today. What have we got today? We've put a show kit together on. for you. So it will make the same size quilt as I've made behind here, which is about 36 by 36. 
Um, so you've got a metre of each of the fabrics and you've got... Now, it's a fat half of wadding, which is a metre piece because the wadding is... <laughs> I, do, I just like doing this to confuse Gemma, I think. It's you know it blows a meter, her mind. <laughs> motor, it's a metre width of the wadding off the roll, but then I cut it along the fold, so you get like an. It's almost a metre square piece of wadding. It's a good. It's a good whack piece of wadding. Is that a technical term? Yeah, I've given you a good whack piece, piece of, of wadding, wadding <laughs> that will do the project. Okay. So it's it's a square piece. More. Well, it's not exactly square, but more or less square. Come here. I'm going to sort your mic. I'm going to do you a little a little trick that we use to stop it folding back on itself. Yeah, you put a little bit of card behind your flimsy top. Aha, uh -huh, that's a good plan. And you also put the mic on the right way. Well, that helps too. Yeah. Thank you. We're all good. So you've got two meters of fabric and a meter piece of wadding, meter squareish of wadding. So you don't need any extra to bind it because we're no. going to show that technique in a minute. Um, so that's the whole quilt? Yes. The whole thing in? You don't that need to buy it. anything yeah. else? You'll need your thread and your machine, obviously, but everything is there to do your quilt with. As I, the same size as I've done behind. Which that's is a pretty nice, good, isn't it? Which is a nice lap quilt or, you know, a swing over the back of your sofa to bring round your shoulders in the evening. Again, baby quilt, you know, nice little quilt for them to lie on and play on. Um, I think it's quite nice as a baby quilt, actually. So Emily's quilts that she had, she had a lot of baby quilts. Yeah. She's now using, she now uses them, yes. which is lovely because they're just, they're just part of her bedroom and that's what she does. And yeah. she makes dens with them and she... Superman capes. And yeah, yeah, Superman capes. And she tucks up her animals in them yes. and she makes dens over a little trampoline thing that she's got. And yeah. so they're used. And I think I've told you the story about Isaac and his quilt. When he, when he was... About two, and he went into his big bed. Yes. My mum made him a beautiful quilt. It was a pre-printed pre panel with a lovely rainbow border. It was Noah and his ark. Yeah. And a pre-printed and a rainbow border around the edge. Beautiful quilt. And he took that quilt with him everywhere. And when he got to 18, I made him a slightly more modern jazzy quilt and I, for his 18th. And I said, well, you can take that to uni with you then. And he was like, well, I think I might take my Noah's ark quilt with me. And I went into his digs the one day to, to see him and there were three like 18 plus lads playing video game together with this Noah's Ark quilt over there. The three of them on the sofa with this Noah's Ark quilt over there. <laughs> they don't grow up, do they? No. And it's but that this... little bit of home that they take yeah, with them. Yeah, but the thing with the Noah's Ark quilt is it had been with him all that time. It had been washed. He'd, you know, he'd been poorly. He'd had it yeah. then. It was a comfort. Yeah. So it had been washed. It had been worn. It was well loved and soft, and you know. Whereas the new quilt, slightly modern, was still quite stiff. So. Needed a good few washes yeah. to, to really yeah. make it scrunchy. Yeah. And that's the thing, isn't it? You're making heirloom pieces. I know sometimes, especially with children's fabric, it's it's really tempting, especially if you've got more than one grandchild to make for. Yes. To just buy cheaper fabric. Yeah. And go, well, they won't notice the difference. No. But actually, if you want it to last. Yeah. Do the difference. Yeah, they do, and it and it does become part of their childhood. So, yeah. like you say, when they're leaving home for the first time, it's something they can take with yeah, them and just exactly. have that bit of home. And yeah, just so. know, um, we've we're limited on these. How many could we make of these in the end? I think there was nine. We're really limited on these. Yeah, we? really limited. Okay, so this is what happens when we get we get a bolt of fabric. You see, and it, they tend to come in ten meter pieces, don't they? So they do. And they then do. I nick a piece to do the sample you with. Did. Yes. <laughs> uh, actually, if Gemma's listening, we could we could load that in case anybody wants to. Buy yeah, it. of course. As is. Oh, my bag's got a bit crushed. Um, right now, if we are saying that backs should be as beautiful as the fronts, yes. Should we have a look at some backing? Yeah. We went through our backing well, this we've, morning. We've got that fabulous one. Did you not make some trousers? With I that? did. I did. Because it's just fabulous. I made. I made wide. Well, actually, it was Jules Fallon's pajama bottom pattern yeah. that I adapted to be wide leg culotte. The pink ones. Yes. 
and I interviewed Kay for a festival of quilts wearing basically pyjamas and a six inch heel. Six inch heel. It's yeah. fabulous and we sat down anyway, thank God. Um, <coughs> so yeah, I did. These are our super wides. They are super scrummy. I mean... Yeah, yeah. so what you see there, you get four times that because it's folded onto our standard width bolt, but it's folded over four times. Amazing. Gemma's just said, I can't hear. What can't you hear? There's so much rustling that Hans can't hear you. Is it me? I'm not sure. It's a it's so loud that Hans can't hear you. Perhaps straighten out the flex. So Jane, straighten out the flex. Well, I don't mind having it hanging. It's just, there we go. I'll just leave it loose. Got my aerials. Straighten mine up. The aerials not. Sometimes you get your aerials bent over, don't you? And it affects. I think we the... need to get some new leads for these, don't we? Possibly. Been one left. When I go to Crate and Craft, there's always don't put your mic packs in da, 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 all the places I put my mic packs. Yeah. So it's obviously a thing. Yes. I reckon it's probably this one. I'll take it out when I go and sit down. Um, in fact, shall I do that and shall I leave you to flash these? Yes, I can flash these around. If it's me, if it's not <clears throat> me... It might be me. <laughs> By process of elimination, Jane. The thing about the cave backing fabric, it's like a sateen. It is cotton. It's a cotton sateen, it it's is. It's beautiful because it's got a sheen to it and you can just see that look on the camera now. It's. I mean... Sometimes you think, well, that's too good to leave on the back of your quilt. But, you know, if you make a quilt with a fabulous backing, you've got two fil quilts in effect because you can reverse them. And also you can, you can pull one back, can't you? Yes. Do you... OK, so then this is the question then, Jane. Do you do your fabric, your backing fabric, round the right way? Or do you do it so that when it's folded over... Oh, there's a conundrum, isn't it? Oh, which do you do? Well, I tend to just use mine as backing fabric. And I do a lot of my quilts for show, so they tend to be very plain on the back, like cal yeah. even calico. But there's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly fine. If, if you you're know not that your going... quilt is going to go up on a wall. Yeah, or even if you know that it's going to be on the back of your sofa and the only time you're going to have it is when it's on your knee and you'll still have the calico against your legs. Yeah. It's, it's not a problem. But if you're going to have a quilt, and if you want to gift a quilt, yeah. you want to have something nice on the back as well. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Something that looks fabulous. Yeah. We've so got we've got some, some things that look fabulous. We've got some bolt ends here of Kaif. Um, and Tilda. And Tilda, yes. And some Batiks and, and Morris. Some Morris here We've got as well. all the stuff in all the world. This is Lotus Blossom, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I didn't know if this was too big of a piece. Well, it's a 2.6 metre piece. 2.65 metre. Which will do, will do you a couple of quilts. Yeah. Or do, you know, if you've got a really big king size one that you're working on. And I'm pretty sure Gemma will put a little discount on these as well yeah. as she loads them. Look at that. That is stunning. I absolutely adore this. Um, I know that Gemma dress makes with these. I've yeah, made she's got a beautiful wafty wafty jacket with it. She does similar have a wafty, fabric. Wafty. Yes. Just so, gorgeous colours. Okay, fabric. It's just stunning, isn't it? These are 108s. Now, what that means is 108 inches wide as opposed to 44 inches. We've got a long quarter here of the Morris. Now, if I lift that up. Which is 270 centimetres for anybody that needs... That's... That's it in half. That's it in half there. So you can see it's going to be double that. That's a long quarter piece. Now, you might think, well, what's the point of that? But you could use that for borders. I'd sash with it all over Or sash or bind. Or you could, you know, if you've got a cushion, you could make the back with that. Make it, put it together. It's a useful piece of lovely fabric. And also the way that it's cut, you've got you've got quite a nice part of the pattern running yes. through it. Yes, yeah, it's a lovely piece. So, although it's just a long quarter, it's it's There's a no useful. Such thing as just. It's useful. Now this piece, this is chrysanthemum, I think, is it? I think it might I'm be. I'm going to say yes. That is a divine. Oh. 
Um, it's Japanese. Just so over half a metre piece, I think. Yes. Mm. 52... I'm going, to I'm going to just measure this because it's just measurements. It's a 32 inch wide piece, yeah. So just, that's over 60 centimetres. Has that been wrongly measured? I think it might have been. From the wrong way. Has it been done the wrong way around? Possibly, yeah. Let me, so you think that is how much? 32 inches. Yeah, that's a 32 inch piece. Let's measure both ends just to be sure. Because what happens when we get to the bolt end, sometimes it's a bit wobbly. Yeah, and we take the shortest measurement, 32 inches. Cool. Which is 75, 80 centimetres probably. Now, the thing is, when you've got extra wide backing, of course, is you can always, if you get a piece like this, you can cut it along the fold and join it back together. It's really usable and really So you get, you get the two widths if you like to make one whole length it's a big chunk of fabric it is it's a good piece and and if you are a dressmaker a piece like that uh, extra wide would probably make your dress this is a half meter piece look at this this oh i just is it though i love it yes, yes it, it is. is yeah yeah i is. am amazed we have any of this I think it literally is the last little bit on the bolt. Yeah, no, it is. I love this. I just, it's <coughs> just so gentle, but big and bold, which sounds really weird, but it's a gentle pattern, the soft colours. And I love this sort of like shadow of the flowers behind as well. Whoever gets that's gonna have a beautiful piece of fabric. So those are the caves that we have, bolt ends, extra wide. Then we've got this beautiful piece of pink and it says it's 1.8. Yeah, well, I think there might be more. It says it's 1.8. Yeah, so that's two yards of fabric there and it's extra wide. Now I don't think the batik is as is it 108? The yeah, 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 yeah. It is, yes. We, do you know why I ended up with quite a few 108s when we were doing one of the subscriptions, yes. one, of the, one of the Baltimore's, because we were getting through the pink batik like nobody's That's business. That's right, yes. And then we had supply issues. Yeah. And so it was exactly the same colourway, but I bought the extra wide. Yeah, we could get four fat quarters from the width then, couldn't we? Yeah. So... That is a lovely. Now, the thing with batiks is I would recommend that you wash them first because batiks, by their very nature, can bleed. So if you're using that on the back of your, of your quilt, it might be an idea to wash the fabric first. It's just first. residual um, yeah. dye from it's, the dyeing process, It's the process it? of, of batik. It, it, it does have a tendency to bleed, so it's always worth giving it a, a wash. And we've got some beautiful, another piece of this beautiful... William Morris, 1.2 metres. Now, if you're looking to find these, Gemma is loading these now. That is Strawberry speak. Thief in a beautiful linen colour. Very subtle, very soft. I've got it upside down because I'm looking at it the other <laughs> way. There you go, you can see it now. It's a large scale design of the Strawberry Thief. So the, the bird, the Strawberry Thief itself, is about the same size as my hand. Jane, if you are buying because you're seeing a deal and you're not quite sure what you're going to be quilting in the future. Yeah. This is perfect. Yeah, a neutral like this, just ideal. Because neutrals, as we know, go with anything, go with don't they? They do, they're beautiful. And again, there's an, you know, if you wanted to, you could use this on the front of your quilt, make nice big squares um, for panels, cushion fronts, all sorts of things like that, because it's such a classic design. So there's the strawberry piece. And then this beautiful piece of tilde, and there's 1.9 metres, nearly two metres of this. Look at that. So if you have bought into the new tilde collection, which should be arriving today, Jane, so we can get that cut. We can't post it until tomorrow, because that's the world. That's the rules. That's them, the, them the world the rules. launch yeah. is tomorrow. But we can get all those orders cut. That is beautiful. The, the, the spot on this has got the sort of like rings in it, almost like, wood rings you can't really see it on the camera it's beautiful lovely soft gray green 
Chris has just come in with the half metre heavens. Oh, well beautiful. timed. Yeah, really well timed. Thank you, love. <coughs> We've also got, because I'm going to demonstrate, I'm not going to use the Beth and Janine fabric because as we said, we're short on the kit. So we found some of the scraps from the sleuth fabric. Well, this was the really nice thing about yeah, that gorgeous quilt that you did was that everybody looked at it and thought it was really, really complicated because of this fabric. This lovely bit of cheats panel, basically. Um, this curved piecing. And we found two bolt end pieces of this. Nice. Which we've put up because some people might like to have a little play with this and make a table runner or a cushion front or a bag. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to demonstrate with a piece of this today. So we've got this piece, which is 25, 24 centimetres, 60 inches, that is. Um, that is the... I can't remember which one it is, but I know this one's the warm. I don't know whether this... It's the other one. Classic, maybe. maybe. <laughs> it's the other one. Yeah, because there yeah. was a blue one, but of course yeah. that just, that went, everybody had that. But this one, this warm one, I love this because I love the way that the oranges and the mustards go into purple. Look at that. It's so cleverly done. It's beautiful. Do you know Juicy Juice is, is up there now as, as, as one I'm watching. Yeah. I do love his, his style because he mixes in <coughs> what I would class as traditional, maybe even vintage, you know, like the Kansas Troubles, the really old pioneer style yes. patterns of fabric, but mixes them in with modern design, which is just fabulous. And hey. this is what's lovely about this. Each of these um, shapes here is fabrics from within the collection. So it mirrors, it's almost like you have pieced from the collection. Jane, did you know, and I didn't know, because I don't really, I'm not involved in any kind of gossip or anything like that, but <laughs> I'm going to share this now. Did you know that Juicy Juice and um, Alison Glass are besties? It doesn't surprise me. They have a similar design style, don't they? They like right. bold and bright and classic. So here's the thing. I have just ordered. I'll just check to you while I sort it out over here. Yeah. Um, there oh, we go. There you forward, are. Um, I dared to look at Facebook. Um, <laughs> I have just ordered. So this will come in much later on in the year. A collaboration. Ooh, fabulous. Between Alice and Glass and Juicy Juice. And they look phenomenal together. Yeah, I can believe it because they've got a very similar design style. They They're love the, the bright, they love colour, don't they, both yes. of them, which just is lovely. I don't know why I've overlooked Juicy Juice in the past. I feel bad. I feel like I should go and apologise or something. <laughs> Tell them I'm sorry. Yes. And we'll try harder in the future. And... Um, I had to beat people off with a stick when I took that quilt you made, the sleuth quilt, yes. into Crate and Craft. Honestly, yeah, I, I could have sold it, it. Ten, 20 times over. Yeah. To presenters and people that have never really, you know, they've, they've kind of like got fabric, but they've never been excited about it. They yeah. saw that quilt and were like, oh, it's just amazing. Yeah. And so it, it was could be, straightforward, yeah. such a straightforward pattern. So with those cheetah panels, you might be doing... I had a request to do a man bag. You might do a quilted man bag. Yeah. You might do a tablet, a quilted tablet cover. Yeah. Or, or anything like that. They're a really nice way of practising your quilting. If you're a beginner, to get something that's already pieced, if you like, to practise on, that at the end of the day, hasn't, you haven't invested the time into. So if it doesn't go quite as beautifully as you expect, Yes. because we all set ourselves up for... I don't want to say failure, but we all set ourselves up for failure. Come on, um, <laughs> perfectionist in the room. Yeah. What do you do? And what self-talk do you give yourself, oh, Jane? Oh, that you're rubbish and you'll never be out good enough and it's just, you know... That's coming from our Jane. Yeah. That's coming from our Jane. <laughs> Who we all aspire to be like. <laughs> it's very difficult when you've, you've been taught by two people that are world-renowned quilters, you know, that are published and have had, you know, been doing it for so long and do absolutely you, exquisite only... work and you're only you know the practice that they've put into their work 
And my teachers are the first to say, well, if you saw the first ones I did, you wouldn't be saying that. Um, and it's and all about practice. You do a quilt a week, Jane? Yeah, I do. Not every week, but nearly, nearly every week, don't I? And the only reason you're not published yet is because you haven't had time to write it yet. <laughs> We're going to put that right. Yeah. Um, anyway, we digress. Anywho. We digress. Anywho, as, let's... As Jane ends up getting a pep talk <laughs> from me. <laughs> Just what you wanted, wasn't it? Yes. On a Wednesday. What I need. Yes, absolutely. Right. Half Meter Heavens, for those of you that do not know or who may be new to us, these go live tonight at midnight. Well, one minute to actually. Um, this Hello. is the last of the pandas. I love this panda. I love the pandas. It's a linen weight fabric as well so it's slightly heavier so we've put it with natural seeded cotton which matches the panda body because it it is like it's a linen so the seeded just picks up this linen effect Happy days. there is a little bit of seed in the in the seeded natural seeded so there's little specks in it which i love so i don't think it's fabric's faulty it's got a speck in it do you know what? And I know our viewers love it too. I mm. was packing orders last night and, and I packed up a three metre piece for someone. I yeah. was like, yes, good job. Good choice. Yeah, it's beautiful. I was doing that thing of going, I'll shop. Yeah, we I do it a lot. I agree actually. with your basket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're very nosy. We're like, well oh, done you. What are they doing with that? <laughs> it's the next best thing to to actually shopping for yourself. Though, it is, it? actually, yeah. Seeing what other people have shopped for. And you see combinations that you might not have thought of and you're like, oh, I like that. Very nice. Those look lovely together. Very nice. Um, this is the last of the sale of Valentine, Valentine. Because I might have nicked the rest of it for my kitchen chair. This is with azalea, I'm yeah. guessing, because it picks yeah. up these beautiful shells. You can tell this yeah. is the end of the bolt. Look, it's a bit wrinkly. Um, Look at that. That's my face's excuse, Jane. <laughs> it's well lived in. <laughs> end of the bolt. <laughs> the end of the body. <laughs> oh. You don't have to think about it too much, do you? Um, it's a sign of a life well lived, is what I think. My mum always says that by the age of 40, you have to choose between your bottom or your face and decide which one you want to look good. <laughs> this is... Wisteria. This is wisteria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That pattern that way because wisteria flowers hang down. Do you? Okay, that's my question to you. Do or, or anyone? In so in fact, Cynthia, you're in America. Do you have wisteria in America? I think they do, don't they? I don't know. It's just I remember seeing someone who'd done the most exquisite jacket out of the wisteria and got it the wrong way up. Had it like it was, yeah. Oh right, maybe and they I don't know. I wonder it one of if our, a classic. English flower. Because our house is covered in wisteria. It's beautiful. It smells divine when it comes out. It does. It wrecks all the front of the house and the windows. But apart from that... Yeah, it comes in. I, had yeah. a, I used to have a lady that came to classes at the shop and she had wisteria in her house and she, she came in the one day and I said, are you all right? She said, yes, I've just been battling the wisteria that's invading my bedroom. I was like, oh, OK. But it does. <laughs> And it does, and it grows really, really fast. Yeah, it does. But... She said one minute you can just see a little tendril like sneaking through, and the next minute it's in. It is a bit like Little Shop of Horrors, I'm yeah. not going to lie. But the most beautiful thing is, though, is in the mornings when you hear all the birds that are nesting in it yeah. on the dawn chorus. That's great. My lesser favourite thing is looking at the mouse nest <laughs> that's just outside the kids' bedroom oh, yeah. window, and there's a little mouse nest in the wisteria. Oh, how cute. But yes. But I'm not a mouse fan. No. Well, we know you don't like mice. After having one in your hair, it's partly surprising, really. I'd really like to get over that one day, but I... No. Um, now. Now then. We're going to be very limited on this, Jane. Yeah. Jane, 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 Jane. The strip quilt that we did, we've got some bits left over. Oh, Look at that. Look at it. Um, this is the lace. Is it Alison Glass? Yeah, it's Alice and Glass. I reckon there's only going to be about two of those. Yeah, there won't be many. And we've put that with lavender, just to pick out this beautiful piece of purple that's hidden away within you know the pattern. The ten minute pouches I made oh, yeah. the other week. They wouldn't they look a bit with that? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because you you could make several and they'd all look slightly different because yes. of the ombre of the colours of the yes. fabric. And, and what was the quilt that you did out of a half me 
at Half Moon Heaven. Gosh, what was it called? It was like lots of different... Oh, the Vice Versa. The Vice Versa quilt. Yes. They'd look lovely, oh, wouldn't they? They'd look rather stunning too. This is the Hydrangea version of the lace. It's nice. With our magenta. Because that just picks out this colour here, which is rather stunning. Then I'm, we've got I'm not going to lie, Jane sort of shouted at me across the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> magenta! <laughs> okay then, Jane. You appear to feel quite strongly on this. That one, yeah. It's <laughs> got to be magenta with that one. Apparently there was no other choice. No. Um, this is the Union Jack Scatter. This is from um, Makawa. And it's there, well, it's just called Union Jack, but it's, what have they called it? Vintage L London or something? Yeah, it is something like that. And we've um, put it with Copen. Again, you know your um, bag that you did yesterday? That would look rather lovely with this. I can't remember what I did yesterday. Oh, that bag, but yes. Yes, because uh, it's yes. one directional. The, the Union Jacks are all over. And I could see some teenager young ladies rather loving that. I think these are um, teenage bedrooms. Yes. London Icons collection. That's it. I knew it was something about London. We've got taxi cabs and red buses, double deckers and union flags on this one. We get um, a lot of people buy this and make for family abroad. Yes. Yeah, people that are missing a bit of black taxi cab and Red when London I got de married, double decker buses. That was how I got to the church. Mm. Was in a London cab. Yeah, and you can hire um, London red double decker buses now to take. I they have, have a, the whole wedding there. Yeah, the yeah. whole wedding guest to the venue. Yeah, which is rather good fun. I had a friend that did that, and she said it was lovely. It was a real it, sort of that transition from the church to the venue. It really helped keep the party vibe going with what, everybody. Also, because they yes that's true and they they served fizz on it as well so it like sort of, of you know kept the party going which is lovely i'm not going to lie they do kids party buses but they don't sound nearly much fun <laughs> no. there is a, a severe lack of fizz on the kids party bus yes i should imagine there would be um when freddie i'm gonna say when freddie outgrows dinosaurs he won't um, though will he he's gonna be a paleontologist yeah it's going to be a big part of his life, I think, because he's, he's still... He's, what, 10 now? I told you, didn't I? He's still as enthusiastic. The pantomime. Did I tell you about the pantomime? No. The school, bless them, brought in um, a travelling theatre company to come in and do um, Robin Hood. Uh -huh. All the kids get to come and watch the pantomime rather than trying to ship kids to a theatre the yeah. theatre came to them. Brilliant, lovely. Lovely idea. Having worked in the Royal Shakespeare Company's touring department and our remit was to get a theatre show of, from the Royal Shakespeare Company within an hour's drive of everyone in the country, in the UK. Mm -hmm. Like, I really salute this and I know how difficult that is to make happen. So, Freddie's feedback was, well, that's two hours of maths, I won't get back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been doing maths. Could have been doing maths. <gasps> uh, right, maybe we won't write that as their review. No. Uh, two hours when I could have been, been doing, doing maths. maths. But that's, that's not it. everybody's idea of... No, of fun. Of fun. No, he is unusual. He is unusual, but yeah, paleontology is definitely... Yeah. But I might sneak a bit of this in, because he does have quite a lot of blues in his bedroom as yeah. well. And this one is the overall... It's got... You know, it's got St Paul's and the London Eye, classic British policeman, beef eaters, the crown, cup of tea, I love London. And um, we've put that with our cadet blue, I think. Jane, what do the beef eaters, or the ones with the, with the big bare, bare hats, what do they and our ironing mats have in common? Um, the wool. Yeah. This wool, because their tunics are made from wool, aren't they? It's the underside of their, of yeah. their collars is yeah. made from the same felt Same fabric. Wool. Yeah. The Just Yeoman of the Guard is their correct name, Beef Eaters. The what of the Guard? Yeoman of the Guard. They, they tend to look after the Tower of London. Perfect. 
And then we've got a little bit more Alison glass, and I think you know there's going to be minimal of this nasturtiums. Do we think there's going to be fisticuffs literally at dawn for these? I think people, some people might be disappointed. Just remember that when it's in your basket, it's not yours until you've checked out. And we will combine orders. This is with our aqua. It, it, aqua. Yeah, it is aqua. Look at that. It just needed to be, doesn't it? Yeah, there it's wasn't this another lovely one. little splash of, with the orange. As much as you Beautiful. shouted magenta at me across the warehouse, I went, this one! Yeah, we both agreed that that was the perfect one with that. So these will go live at midnight. Um, Gemma would just like those bowl tens, please, Jane. Okay. We just sneak them to one side. I'm going to slide the box across the floor, go on, by yeah. the door, and then she can... And then we're going to get quilting. Yeah, then we'll do Which some... very exciting. Demo, wing, wing, wing. <coughs> Now we've got two different patterns for you today, haven't we? Yes. They're patterns there. They're guides too, yeah. really. Quilting is very um, difficult to, to sort of write a pattern for because you could write a book about quilting and there'd still be more to say. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's the principles. I've, I've given you the basic principles and then really, and I've said this in the instruction sheet, it's practice, 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 practice. You can't do much more, really. The more you practice, the better you will get at it. It's with everything, isn't it? Yes. That's, that's it. And, you know, you, you won't realise how good you've got. So when you do your first one, keep it. Don't think, oh, God, that's really rubbish, and throw it into the recycling or whatever. Put it in the dog bed. Keep it. Because it's always worth just looking back at it to and thinking, wow, I'm so much better now. Yeah. Even a couple of months down the line, and you'll still think, oh, I'm never going to get the hang of this. You look back at it and you'll think, oh, actually, much better than I was. Yeah. It's always worth it because we're very sort of like, the trouble is we watch, we watch clips on YouTube and we'll watch demonstrations by people who have been doing it for years. Yeah. You know, I've seen them at the shows where they show you the quilting rulers. They make it look so easy. And when you first try and use a quilting ruler, it's not as easy <laughs> as they make it look. Yeah. It really helps. It's a brilliant tool. But it takes practice. And everything, you know, even your piecing, when you look back at your very first quilt and you look at your piecing yeah. and you look at what you do now, your joins are better, your sizing's better, your quilt's straighter, all of those things. It's the same with my patterns, though. When I look back, I go, oh... Yeah, I've there's very so many new yeah. techniques to bring in and make things easier. Um, because when I started, I hadn't got the hours under my fingertips. No. I had the hours of knowledge yes. because I always listened to all the shows that we'd done. So I had that knowledge, but I didn't have the practical. Yeah. And it's only because we have deadlines that it makes me actually not stop procrastinating. Yes. I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. Bless you. Oh, yeah, so quilting. There's so many different types of quilting. Every quilt top is slightly different. You'll want to do different things within that quilt top. Sometimes you'll just think, all I need to do with this is go along the edge of the blocks and it's fine, that's all it needs yeah. because the blocks tell the story. They give you the idea. So quilting, you know... It's just a how-to guide, basically, of how to get your quilt ready for quilting. Okay. And the processes of what you can do once you've done that. Now, we've got another guide as well for you. Yes, we've got the how-to guide for the reverse binding. And then we've bundled both together. Okay. So, and put a little discount. So, if you are buying both together, and let's have a look at, let's have a quick, quick look at those together. Oh. Because... I finished the quilting guide with the quilt is now ready for binding. So that's the reverse binding. I do think we've got another binding guide. I'm not sure. We've the, got the, various binding guides. The ordinary, guides. the one that I use all the time where I cut strips of fabric and then use a colour that highlights the fabric. So this is, And this is what we're trying to bring you, uh, all these different guides, so that you can, you can build them up, put them in your folder. Yeah. I still got a, a book that I refer back to quite often when there's something that I'm trying to work out and I can't quite remember. 
there's always that one book that you're, is your go-to. Yeah. And I'd like these to be your go-to for me. <laughs> Yay! Well, the thing is, is that I know you, you take so long about these and you're very diligent about them. And we always make sure that we have lots of photos, which in a lot of books they don't have. No, they don't. They're not able to. And, and sometimes they're restricted, aren't they, yeah. by, by that. And, that? and that's absolutely fine. But that's where something like this yeah. really steps in. And, and also because we've got the videos as well. So people can buy the instruction, but they can also look back at the video. So if they're like, well, quite, what, did, what does that quite mean? Yeah. You can always go back to the video and just look at me doing it, which is always nice to have as well. I remember having a conversation with the MD of the printer company. We have our own printer here. We print on demand. Yeah. And he said to me, if we had known what coverage per sheet you were going to use in colour, we wouldn't have done the plan we've done for you. <laughs> He's like, you, you cost us money. The way that you just and I'm like, but that's what we need. Yeah. We need, and we will never. And I said, and I won't apologise for it, and I will not skimp on the photos that we bring everyone. No, I think it's because important. It's really because important. It's, that's our learning. That's how we're able to to give you the help that to do the things that you need. And both Natasha and I try and work our patterns from a beginner's point of view because it might be the very first pattern that you've ever picked up. It might be. You know, and if we make an assumption that you know a technique, that's not very fair, is it? If you pick the pattern up and then you're like, well, what does that mean? Hey, and what's the saying? Assumption... It makes an ass out of you and me. That's it. I always say it the wrong way around and then <laughs> and it loses the whole fact yeah. that it spells assumption. assumption yeah. yeah. Um, which, yeah. Now, obviously, for space reasons, I can't show you how to lay out a full quilt, but the technique that I'm going to show you now will work a big quilt you're limited by your space I quite often do mine on the floor push everything back and do it on the floor I do have laminate floor however I am also very lucky to have in my mum's house she has a dining room which has an ex boardroom table in it so it's massive <laughs> and it has a glass top on it so although it's a beautiful French polished underneath the glass top protects it so I can use I can pin quilts out on that as well there are um, tutorials out there about using pool noodles for rolling the quilts oh, and then yeah. unrolling them as you go. That's quite a handy one to, to do as well if you're lacking in space. I think maybe we need to, mm. we need to try a bit of that. So, your backing fabric. You're going to have your backing fabric. You want, if you're quilting it on your domestic machine, it needs to be at least four inches bigger than your actual quilt. Now you might feel that's a bit of a waste and you can skimp on it once you've got your techniques and you understand how it works and you know your machine, you can make it a little bit smaller. But you're setting yourself up for failure if you try and make your quilt top and your quilt back exactly the same size. Oh no. Because what happens is, with the quilting process, it pulls everything in. Yes. And so your backing fabric will pull in and you'll end up with it all wrinkled up at the sides. Um, a little message to Suzanne who says she can't see the tilde and the cave packing on the website. It's being loaded as we speak. Gemma's keep refreshing your page on the website. Yeah. And it will it's being loaded. Gemma's just taking them away to take photos so she can load those. Viv says her hubby is a black cab driver. Oh. Yeah. We've got a couple of black cab drivers in Stafford actually, to be fair. Who drive, you know, from the station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're they're not exclusively London, are they? Jane, I think there's going to be fisticuffs. Your mum's also looking for all the backings on yeah. today's show. She can't find mine. They are being loaded, guys. It's going to be fast as fingers first. It is, you? yeah. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So your backing fabric. If it's not wide enough, you can join. If you've got standard width, if you haven't been able to get hold of any extra wide and you've just got standard width fabric, you can join it. If you join it, try and make your seam not so it doesn't fall in the middle of your quilt, either middle, horizontally, or um, horizontally or vertically. Is that because of folding? Yeah, just because when we fold things, we tend to fold them in half Yeah. before we then fold them up any further. You haven't and what seen you... my folding, have you? <laughs> <laughs> and what happens is, I don't tend to fold mine, I tend to just screw mine up, because then it doesn't, it it doesn't crease up yeah. or anything like that. Because what can happen is, you're constantly folding it, you'll, you can end up with a permanent crease fold in your quilt which is why people who have quilts will quite often take them out 
and drape them or hang them on the line, let them relax and then refold them, but fold them a different way. This is brilliant advice. Yeah, because uh, there are so people technical. in America that just have like cabinets full of quilts. So does Kay. Yeah. You know, um, wait, there's one of the photos is of um, one of my profiles is of, I think it's my Natasha McCarthy yeah. one, is me stood in front of his cabinets. And when you open them up, they are full of capes quilts. Yeah. Absolutely stunning. And he's painted, hand painted all the fronts of them. Oh, wow. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, most of us just have them from Ikea. Yeah. <laughs> Not cave. Oh, no. So, your backing fabric, quilt it. Sometimes what you can do, if you've got two pieces, you could cut one of the pieces in half and put your seams either side. So you could put yes. one half there and one half there. Okay. Um, press your seams open as well, because when you're quilting, you don't want that ridge that you've got to bump over with your quilting foot. Because okay. it can sometimes knock your stitching, what your line wobbly, so press them open. So again, that's another reason why not to have them on a fold line because, obviously, when you've got your seams pressed open, it exposes the stitches. Okay. So it's just a bit of help. I mean, we're talking, you know, when you're probably long gone before that starts to happen, but it's one thing to sort of be aware of. So once you've got your quilt top, you've pressed it. It's all nice and flat. You're going to lay it down on your flat surface. And you're going to take, I take, I use ordinary masking tape. It's not very tacky, it just works. Start pinning in the middle of a side. Don't pin in the corners, because if you pin in corners, that's a biased edge and you'll stretch your fabric. So start at the top, smooth your fabric down, and then in the opposite side. And do that top and bottom and on each side. And what you're doing is you're pulling the fabric tight, but you're not stretching it. Because you don't want to, if you stretch it, you're going to distort it. And when you take, <coughs> the, ta when you take the tape off again, it will, it'll sort of shrink back in, which could lead to tucks and, and um, ripples in the back of your quilt. Okay. So once you've got north, south, east, west done, you then work from that side Smoothing your quilt out and placing tape down the one side and then you'll work, work up. So just smoothing the fabric each time, not stretching it, but just making sure that it's tight and there's no wrinkles in it. And you'll work both sides, top and bottom, so that you've got it all firmly fixed to your flat surface with no wrinkles in. With a piece as small as this, we could use basting glue. Yeah. Now when you use basting glue, just glue it, just baste the wadding. Don't put it on your fabric. It'll just, the fabric will absorb it and pull it in and go gloopy and cause all sorts of problems. Whereas the wadding, you can just mist it onto the wadding and it's enough to hold it. For a small project, like a cushion front, up to the size of maybe um, a baby cot quilt size, Basting glue's fine. Okay. Anything bigger than that, and it it won't hold the layers long enough to for you to to use to do it. Okay. Claire would like to know: Do you use um, quilting gloves for free motion? No. No. You've got hot hands. I've got hot hands. Um, quilt. The thing is, you can find there's all sorts of things out there. There's little like finger sheath things that you can get. You were talking about these yesterday with your oh, ironing. Oh, the silicone ones because I nearly burnt my yeah. fingers. And I've got quite asbestos -y hands. They're good because they're just your fingertips. Yeah. So they'll grip it. Yeah. I know people that quilt in their marigold gloves because that gives them enough grip to. Do you know, I was I thought yeah. I'd imagined that. No, but no, it is a thing, isn't it? And you can buy the cotton quilters gloves that have got the the sort of like rub you know when you get um, riders gloves. Yeah. You know you get those slipper socks that have got that yes. like rubberized bit. The quilters gloves have got that on the yeah. fingertips. So, but no, I don't. I don't feel the need to. But if you find it helps you, the thing is, you'll try everything that helps you get comfortable and feel that you're making progress. Yes. So everybody's different. We, you know, we we all we all do things slightly different and the saying is you know all roads lead to Rome don't they so it's yeah. all ways I'll get to the, get you the end result is fine your wadding will be the same size as your backing or just slightly smaller 
and you just want to smooth that. Are we all right to go overhead again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, apparently we are rustling again. <coughs> um, I haven't flipped be... over. Yeah, what's, the, what, what's your bottom looking like, Jane? I've got my, my aerials out, OK. And there's no oh, wires. I think, I think the wire's pulled down. Can you... Hook it into my pocket? No, from where it comes out of the... Out the top of the, there. Yeah. Took it into my baseband. Yeah. There we Let's go. Let's try that. We'll try that. Stop rustling. So it's calmed down now. There we go. So your wadding, your wadding piece will be as big as, slightly smaller than your backing. And again, you smooth it down. Now, in an ideal situation and everything, you know, you're not working on your dining table that you've got to get done before you make the tea, you would leave your wadding overnight to relax. What? Yeah. That's what your manufacturer would like you to do. <laughs> I'd love to relax. Wouldn't you? It's just, particularly if you're buying a pre-cut piece that's been rolled up tightly inside cellophane, and you'll, you know, as soon as you get it out, you almost hear it go, oh. <sighs> It'll like... have wrinkles and folds in it because of it being folded up. So if you can... Leave it. It's like 24 hours. Work, taking your bra off and putting your PJs on. Yeah, it, it is. Just sort of go, ah. Ah. Yeah. If you can, if you're thinking about before you even layer up your quilt, if you can take your wadding out of the packaging and leave that for a couple of hours before you even unwrap, you know, even put it on the top of your backing, that will do it good as well. It's all about not having too many wrinkles and making life easier for yourself in the long run. Okay. Because you can't iron. Can you, you can't iron really iron wadding. That's tricky. Because it? polyester might shrink oh, or yeah, melt. Oh, polyester, no, don't do that. And your cotton might shrink okay. because of the heat and if you use, particularly so if you use steam. So not a good idea. Pat says, do you use spray fix? Is spray fix a permanent one? Is that a permanent know. adhesive? No, I wouldn't. Um, I tend to use the 505, which is a temporary adhesive, because it's repositionable. So if you've got I it... I find that safer. Yeah. If you've not got, got it quite straight, you can lift it and reposition it. Helen says she just wanted to thank the team for agreeing to swap out a colour on a kit that she ordered, as usual, above and beyond. We try our best, Helen, we do. We, we give it a go. So, um, and Claire said, yeah, I've got plenty of clean riders gloves. Thanks. Yeah, that would work. <laughs> there we go. It's whatever you feel gives you enough grip with your with what you're working. Now, Julie working. says she's recently started using a slider mat and found it's a game changer. Yeah, there's all things out there, all gadgets and tools, all designed by quilters that they have found helps them. Yeah. Oh, Lo's just sure. She's late on patrol, but she's glad to know that's why her tummy gets bigger overnight because it relaxes. Yeah. <laughs> that's We've all got one. tummies like that. <laughs> And then you'll put your piece of quilting, your quilt top, down on your wadding. Actually, weirdly, that looks really nice with that wadding. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it looks really nice. It's lovely, isn't it? Then, um, joining the three layers together. Now, I like to use curved safety pins. Some people don't like curved safety pins. They, they feel, Gemma's not very keen on them because she tends to prick herself every time she uses one. That's any pin. Yeah. It doesn't um, have to be curved, it's just <laughs> any pin. And some people feel that they leave holes in your fabric. Do they? They can, but they're... But anything that goes through yeah. your fabric is going to leave a hole. And the thing is, if you just rub your fabric after you've taken the pin out, the hole will disappear. It's only, it's the width of the pin. You know, it's... It's, it's not a biggie. That's what happens. It's not like it going through um, a PU no. or a faux leather way. No, it's not going to be a permanent mark. mark. <coughs> um, By the time you've washed it, it's gone. You can, you can tack your three layers together okay. if you don't want to use pins. But whichever way you do it, you need to start from the middle. Now, with tacking, you wouldn't be able to do it with it still pinned to the table, floor. Your you'd, have to, you'd have, you'd to, have to lift it up which again gives options for the, the layers to move. Whereas this, you've still got your backing pinned down tight to your table or your floor or whatever flat surface you're using. Um, 
And the beauty of the curved safety pins is that when you put them in and rock them, they pop back out without you having to lift the surf the fabrics. It's clever. It is. It's yeah. It's obviously it's been thought about by somebody that does quilting. <laughs> Amazing. Um, um, quilters by quilters. quilters yeah. yeah. So that goes through the three layers. And this is why my mum's boardroom table is fantastic because it's a glass top, so I can just go in as far as I can go and rock it up, and I know that I'm not going to scratch my table or anything. Don't do it on your best French polished table because you'll wreck it. Um, Josh found some of these and then tried to throw them away because he thought they were bent. <laughs> You're like, no, no. <laughs> Most expensive safety pins in the whole world. <laughs> Don't throw those. But they're no good. They're bent. No, no. They're Never designed to be in. like that. <laughs> Ben's like, can I use these safety pins to put my numbers on my shirts? No, you can't. No. You can have ordinary household pins for those. <laughs> when were they learned? It's like using your fabric scissors, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So last night he was cutting some zips for me <laughs> and I had to just hide the fabric scissors. scissors. Yeah. Don't yeah. use my best scissors. No. So again, start in the middle, work your way to top and bottom from the middle and side and side. Um, palms width apart is usually plenty enough. And if you're using your hand, you'll bring your hand down, pull in the fabric top, pop your pin in. And then you'll want to do just one on the edge, just to hold those three layers together. The beauty with pins is as you get to the sewing, you can start to take them out. Yes. Now I, you can see all of these pins are open. I never close my pins. I leave them all open, oh, which, cause, which causes great consternation because they all get stuck together. <laughs> it's like one of those monkey puzzles, you know, when you used to get them and they yes. bring all the tails together. Yes. But I leave mine open and then I just shake them across the top quilt top and then start using them. So I'm just going to quickly finish pinning this. So you'll get your north, south, east, west, just like you did with your tape on your um, uh, backing fabric with your tape. And then you'll work from the middle, from your middle pin, you work out in rows up to the corner. And again, palms width apart, so you'll, you'll just put them. Sometimes with your fabrics, you'll find that there's a piece of fabric that's just in the middle of where you need it to be, so you're not, don't, Try not to pin through seams because oh, obviously you when you're quilting yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. going to want to sew on those seams. So if you can get it sort of on the piece of fabric rather than it just lends itself perfectly. Jan says for that. thanks for the relaxing wadding tip. Not heard that before. Yeah. Great point is thank you. Do you know what I had heard of that before? And I think it's the manufacturers it. that, that recommend that you do that because obviously the manufacturers want you to get the best from your wadding. Yeah, of course. Because they want you to use their product and they want it to be the nicest. Hi, Gems. Today's instructions. Oh, yes. Today's instructions, right, okay. You have to buy either the two digitals buy or the, the two printers. Okay, you can't mix and match. So you have to buy either the two digitals or the two printed versions together to get the discount. You can't buy one digital, one printed. So either go fully digital or go fully printed. Add them both to basket and automatically we will give you a discount because we're nice. Yeah, but if you put a printed and a digital, it won't discount uh -uh. it. The computer says no. It, it just blows its mind. Um, who was at the door? Collection. Oh, collection. I want stuff delivered. <laughs> well, I mean, I do want it collected, but I also want stuff yeah. delivered. <laughs> we're waiting for deliveries. Okay. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So once you've got it all pinned, you can then take your um, masking tape off and your quilt is then ready for quilting. Now if you take it to a long arm quilter, the chances yep. are they'll have the wadding for you. Some, some quilting shops have the backing as well that you can choose. Um, but if they want it, if you're going to take it to be long arm quilted, which is, is long arm quilting is when you put, um, it's a professional service. Not many of us are, have the luxury or the space of being able to have our, long, our own long arm quilting machine. Apart from you do, Jane. You do. <laughs> <laughs> um, <from> Jane. <laughs> and that's only because my mum lives in a big house and I'm able to use room in her house. Um, and I do know people that have got their own long arm machine. But your quilt backing has to be eight inches bigger than your quilt top, if not bigger. It is. It's, it's because they go on rollers and you need that space where the roller is, 
before you can start quilting because the machine, the, the arm of the machine will hit the roller otherwise and it won't go to it. So talk to your long arm quilter. She'll tell you how much extra fabric you need for backing if you need to provide it because they may have it. They may provide the wadding, but again, they, they'll tell you how much you need. And they generally provide the thread. Yeah. Quite often they'll provide the thread because they'll have a thread that works best with their machine. Now, and they'll have a whole array of colours It's a really beautiful choose. thing. When I send mine off to Amanda, I'm very honest about the fact that I love to patchwork, quilting, no, not my thing. No, and not everybody does. And I know, I know people that have been patchworking for years and years and they're like, no, not quilting. No, not for me. Um, I just, I don't, ha it's a time factor yeah. for me. And some people just don't enjoy it. But when it comes back from her, um, it's always beautifully overlocked, which yes. makes binding so super easy after that yes. um, not all long arm quarters offer that service i must no. say um and now we did we did have vouchers didn't we that you could buy for amanda yes but she's still doing them she's still doing it but her but website she hasn't got yeah. a website or something no you need to contact her by email Directly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or Facebook. So, She's on Facebook. But so she, her website's not working. It had the issues with it. It was going to cost too much to repair. So she decided she didn't actually need one because she does so much work word of mouth and has regular customers that come to her all the time. Of which we are one. Yeah. <laughs> She's on Facebook and she's easily got hold of via if email. Buy, if you buy the vouchers for her quilting service through us, then we can give you her details yes. to get in touch. Because sometimes, <coughs> other halves, um, it's a lovely gift. It is. Because yeah. you've just given the gift of time and a finished project to yes. someone, which Absolutely. is super exciting. It's just what you need. Yes. Um, yeah. I was going to say something else then. Oh, yes, she's, she's got a back. She's up to April. Yeah. So, you know, if you want it doing for next week, maybe not on your long, long armour. And you'll find that with most long armours, they've got two or three months work in hand before your quilt can be done. So it's worth bearing that in mind as well when you're making something for someone that you think you're going to need, like, in two weeks' time. I thought you meant as a business solution. <laughs> Clearly a gap in the market. We need more long arm quilters. Yes. Yes. So once your quilt's all ready, you're then ready to start quilting it. Now, on your machine, some machines will have um, an even feed foot. Are we looking at it? Um, no, because I haven't, I've got the different oh, machine. Yeah. But it's a, an arm that comes down and sits underneath the foot, so you don't have to change the foot. It so works. when you say some machines, we are talking the NX yes, and the, the UX. Yes, the lovely one I've got in my workroom has an even feed foot on it which is rather lovely because you don't it saves time because you don't have yeah. to take foot off foot on type of thing um this foot you need to take the foot off and put the walking foot on oh now jane you are going into my odile velvet thing yes beautiful um, i bought some extra velvet borders which we do actually have yes and when we're finished cutting everything I'll yeah there's some kits there's a few people that have been emailing asking where their Odile orders have got to. Now, Possibly Spain. Yeah. <laughs> the ones that have had the Christmas panel, tree panel yeah. and, the, and the, rib, the velvet borders, those orders are out and on their way to people. Um, but the cushion panel, if you've got a cushion panel in your order, you're still going to be waiting because they went to Spain. They did go to Spain. Um, we didn't send them to Spain. They got put on the wrong plane. Um, I've just had a message from Odile this morning saying she's chased them again and they should be being put on the plane today, which means we will either get them tomorrow or the next day. I can only apologise. Honestly, the far, the, you couldn't write it. You <laughs> couldn't write it. This fabric. It's really almost like a... Monty Python sketch, isn't it? Really? And the really ridiculous thing is, is that we love buying from Odile because everything is sourced in Europe and it doesn't travel that far. No. But these blinking cushion panels have been all over Europe. They've been backpacking, I'm pretty sure, but they yeah. are... They're yeah, on their way. We have been assured that they will be put on the correct... I mean... And as soon as they arrive, we will give them our priority. I have I've emailed oh, yeah. people's back, back and said, you know... Once they cut here, that's going to be our priority. However frustrated you might feel at home, you can imagine how frustrated we feel every day we open up the customer services and go, ah, ah, yeah. 
work because we hate letting anybody down. No, and we it's, don't. They it's are, not what we do. You won't be let down. They will be with you. Yes. Um, just not in the time frame that we had. We could never have guessed that this would all go wrong. There's all been other things that have gone yeah. on that. So we can have only hindered it as well. But so, I think yeah. you will forgive us the minute that you touch them and yes. go. Yes. <gasps> yeah. Good things are worth waiting for. Yeah. Right. So walking feet. Can we go close up? And oh, then I'm yeah, gonna... sorry. sorry. I was just agreeing with Lo that she needs some um, Odile Velvet. She does. So, your walking foot. It's, um, it's called a walking foot. Sometimes it's called an even feed foot. Can you see how when you lift this arm here, it makes those, that part of the foot go up and down? I'm trying to do it so that my hands don't get in the way. There we go. Can you see that? And that literally makes the foot walk across the fabric. Now your ordinary foot on your machine is called a presser foot because it does exactly that. It presses the fabric together, which is great when you've got two layers, but if you've got three, it will move those three layers apart. And you can quilt small projects with your ordinary presser foot on. I don't recommend it, but you can do it. But if you try and do a big quilt, you'll end up with your quilt top coming right up to the edge of your wadding by the time you get to the bottom of it, because it'll have moved. Um, it's not the easiest thing. And, you, and you, again, you'll get tucks and ripples in your quilt that won't make you happy. So your walking foot may look like this with um, a prong on it, or it may just be a bar that sits above. And what that sits above is the, the nut here that holds the needle in. So this one, that prong goes either side of the needle nut, and the ones that have a bar, the bar sits on top of the needle nut. Now it needs to do that because as the, the needle goes in and out of the fabric, that is what makes the arm go up and down, which makes your walking foot walk. Now, Jane, it is fair to say that these are consumables. What I mean by that is that you will have to at some point replace yeah, your Yeah, they wear foot. out. It's not going to last forever and ever and ever, which I get really cross about. Yeah. But it's just a fact of life. Like, like I can never imagine I'm ever going to need to replace that presser foot. No, you probably... I need to clean it. Yes. But I don't need to replace it. No, you, you won't. But your walking foot, because of the mechanism in it, what will happen is it wears out and this part or this part will come away. And you just, you have to buy a new one. It's what happens, I'm afraid. It's what it is. But don't, but if that's don't happened think to it's, you, don't, don't think, think it's, you've done something. No, it's, it's a part that wears out on your machine. Now, refer to your manual as to how and what sort of foot you would need. Sometimes you'll get a, a quilting um, bundle. So you'll get your buying machine and it comes with a walking foot, an embroidery foot, a quarter inch foot and all sorts of things like that which is rather good to have. Sometimes you can buy universal ones for your machine. Sometimes your machine won't like that and you have to have the, the foot that, suit, that goes with the machine. It'll all be in your manual. Um, what the manufacturer will tell you is that a universal foot will void your warranty. And that's all I'm going to say on that. Um, I think they have to say that. They do. So... Just taking that foot and I'm just putting the screw back in and I'm going to screw that back up so that it's nice and tight. Some of them have clips that you can just unclip it and clip it back in. Some you have to take the, the, the presser foot completely off and unscrew it and put the screw back in. They're all slightly different and as I say, just refer to your manual. Just make sure it's on there nice and firm, no, no movement within the foot. And put your presser foot somewhere safe where you know it is. If you've got a pouch like Natasha has that you keep everything in, yep. put it back in the pouch. Yeah. Because you can guarantee you'll lost it by the time you finish quilting. Yeah. Really annoying. And it's very upsetting. Yeah. So for quilting, you'll need to lengthen your stitch. And again, even with your walking foot, I say practice. So get a just. A couple of pieces of fabric. If you've got some of the fabric that you've used in your quilt, all the better because then it's going to react the same way. Otherwise, just make a calico sandwich with two pieces of calico and a bit of wadding and just have a practice. Just to find your stitch length, just to have a practice in a little gentle curve because your walking foot you can do gentle curves with. Nice. You can't do your wiggly squiggly meander. Okay. But you can do a gentle curve. Okay. 
So, and you can get some really lovely effects just with your walking foot. Okay. But that's, a whole, that's a whole new show. <laughs> <laughs> now, talking of a whole new show in terms of that, Jane, do you want to tell everyone what we're working on? We're going to be working on a um, sort of a quilting-based subscription, are we? Sort of patchwork and quilting-based subscription with me. With you. With me. We need name suggestions for this. <laughs> Quilt with Jane. Basically, what we want to create is... Let's see your face, Jane. Oh, you everyone have to. <laughs> um, so with my subscription, we've got quick, easy makes and a Zoom call every month. Mm -hmm. With you, there's going to be a glossary of terms for quilting, yeah. which we'll build on, and every month a different block. Yeah, we're going to start with the very basics, like cutting your fabric how the formulas so how to make the basic units like a square rectangle strips um sewing them together accurately your half square triangles your quarter square triangles your three triangle units building up a, a basis and then we'll talk about how those units then go in together to make blocks is i'm the very plan. excited about this yes. i'm very excited and maybe we call it jane's quilt school i don't know <laughs> But something like, something like, yeah. um, because with the best will in the world, I want to have that glossary, a video glossary that people can just refer back to. Like your book, but for those people that are visual learners, yes, you know, that, that need to refer back to, oh, crikey, I've got to qu cut squares. I need it to be a certain finish size for yeah. half square triangles. How much is it? Seven eighths of it? Like, I can never remember. Yeah. How much yes. do I need to add? That's right. Yeah, yes. so it's always handy to have that. Right, so back to the quilting. <coughs> Sorry, Jane, I don't... Length and you stitch. I have mine on a 3.5 on my machine. Some machines... This is why I say make a quilt sandwich, have a practice, get a stitch. The thing about quilting is you want to see the stitch. It's decorative as well as functional. It's holding those three layers together to add that warmth, but it's also decorative. So you want to see it. So lengthen your stitch. By lengthening your stitch as well, it'll prevent it pulling too tightly. A very tiny stitch mm -hmm. makes it quite tight. So it's when, like, when a you're bag stitch. making, you'd lengthen your stitch when you're going through your Starville fix. Yeah. It's got it's got a journey up through it yes. and along and down. That's right. Rather than just across. It will make your project tight if you have a if you have a small stitch. Now, when you've got blocks, let's pretend that these are blocks. The first thing to do really is to sew in the ditch along the box. Now you're like, what's, what does in the ditch mean? Can we go forward way? When you've got your um, blocks together, when you press your seam, you always press to one side. Yeah. So people used to think that in the ditch was like sewing on the seam line. Yeah. Well, it sort of is, but it's not quite. When your fabrics are together, when you've put your seam together, one will be slightly higher than the other okay. because of the fold of the fabric. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're sewing on the lower fabric against that fold, okay. which is like the seam, yeah. but it's just not quite in the like seam. thread across. Yeah. yeah. So that's what in the ditch is. So you can't always so do it. So it's not quite in the road. Yeah. <laughs> you're a bit safer. Um, you can't always sew on the flat flatter side because of the way your quilt is yeah sometimes you have to go on the top one but don't stress about it but that's <coughs> what in the ditch means it's it's in that seam but on the flatter side of the two pieces okay um echo quilting which you can do with your walking foot is you use that seam as a guide but you sew away even yeah. if it's only like an eighth of an inch that's still echo quilting it's away from the seam and you can get nice patterns just by echo quilting. I really like echo quilting. It's I lovely. Really and like echo, quilting echo quilting actually sometimes is easier than trying to stay in the ditch. Yes. Uh, because if you come out of the ditch... You get all upset about it and it makes you anxious and you feel like you've ruined your quilt. Which actually, when you've got it on the wall and three feet away from you, you can't see you that you've see. hopped out of the ditch. But yeah. we know what we're like. <laughs> we're up, we're the all the like. same. Yeah. We're all the same and we get... Yeah really anxious and the thing you have to remember as well is because when you're quilting you're right on top of your quilt you're like millimeters sometimes don't get that close to it when you're sewing you might see your nose but 
you're, you're quite close, closer than yeah. you would be when your quilt's on the bed or on the back of the sofa or hanging on the wall. So we use this three feet rule. If you can't see the mistake from three feet away, then it's not a mistake. Perfect. You know, because yeah. we're like right there, we can see every stitch yeah. and every one that's not quite in the ditch and all of that. So again, be easy on yourself, be kind to yourself and give, you know. I also remember you doing it for fun. Yes. Do you reckon when they were stitching the Bayer tap tapestry, they had the same anxiety? No. No, okay. Good. They were creating a story and they didn't, uh, they would have used the, the top stitch, I mean, they wouldn't have used apprentice stitches. But they would have, they wouldn't have worried about it. Okay. Colette says, uh, Natasha, will you be putting a demo of your clamshell pouch on your website? It's going in the members area. I filmed it, and for some reason, it slipped into slow motion. I have no <laughs> idea why. Absolutely I bet that no was fun why. to watch back. <laughs> it was fifty-eight minutes long. <laughs> By the time it's slow motion, I have no idea why. So yes, I spent ages filming it beautifully for you the other day to put up onto the member's website. Um, and now I've got to film it again. I also did, what else did I do? I did the flexi, um, the flexi pouch, flexi frame, and did that in cinematic and it's too massive to download. I didn't know that was going to be. <laughs> so I've had a bit of learning. What has gone up is the teacup. Oh, Jane, could you just show them the teacup? Yes. On Upcycling teacups. This one's going to be thrown away. How very dare they? Can you see that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna to go close up. Put it on the close up, yeah. They were going to throw it away after one of the school fates because no one had bought this bone china set and it was chipped and everything else. So I was like, I'll have that. I'll upcycle that with a bit of my new tilde. Isn't so that I lovely? Do. It's a really pretty. And that's such a lovely gift for a sewing friend, isn't it? Exactly. So there's a demo on how to do that. So get your own. I do this with... Um, the, the beauty of having a saucer is you can like rest your scissors and your marking pens in the saucer and put your bobbins you in there. You turn those. that upside down there. Is it stuck? Woohoo! Magic. Good, it worked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what's going to happen? Turn it upside down, Jane. <laughs> um, yeah. That's lovely. <coughs> but Pretty. it saves it going into landfill. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I've got the world's squeakiest chair over here. Um, so, in short, yes, Colette, um, I've got to refilm it because I love having to double do everything. It's my favourite thing. Now, now then, this isn't working because Why do you what I said to you about getting it over the arm. This is what happens when you don't put your arm over the needle nut. Can you see? It just stitches on the, pl on the spot and you'll be like, oh no, I've broken it, what's happened? I was too busy talking and didn't pay attention. So it's easily fixed. We'll just take that off. I, I love this. Elizabeth grinds the saucer with a Dremel so that it sticks better. Oh, really? Um, I love the fact that you are just let loose with power tools. This, you are my <laughs> tribe. You are my tribe. I got very excited when my new sander arrived the other day um, so that I could sand the kitchen table. It's the little things, isn't it? It just really is. Make life lovely. And, and Josh is learning, because obviously we, we are newly cohabiting. And, and he's learning to just see if I have a power tool for any job that requires doing now. Yeah. He'll get used to the fact that you don't actually need a man for jobs around the house. No. But it's nice to have one. It's nice to have one. He's a nice to have. It's very handy when we're having issues with the computer, I know that. Well, yeah, absolutely. Then he is rather essential. Being a super yeah. whiz that he is. Right. Oh, um, and Lo also says, um, she's put a magnet on the bottom of the saucer for needles. Oh, good plan. Ah, oh, good plan, Stan. So, let's go back again. We're doing the walking, we're going to do, like, through the, um, what would be essentially the blocks. So... Um, start in the middle of your quilt or as near to the middle as you can and work out and this way if you've got any sort of excess fabric that you know is not quite hasn't quite lain flat you've got the opportunity then to to re-straighten it yeah. should you need to there's quite a lot of dremel love going on which yes. wasn't quite how I imagined this going is <laughs> that but when it, when it comes to Julia I'm imagining that is a um, poor toenail 
understanding that situation. It's quite handy. Yeah. So just through the blocks and then do all sort of like vertically and then go horizontally. And again, start from the middle. I working from the, the edge. Way. Working from one edge, but always working from the same edge. So if you start on the left hand side, always start on the left hand side. Because what happens if you go one way and then go down the other way, you're going to get a ripple in your quilt. Yeah. So again, Jane, ask me how I know all about these things. <laughs> yes. I made all of these mistakes with the first with the first big quilt top that I ever tried to quilt. And this is when you get disheartened by it all and think, oh, I'm rubbish at this, I can't do oh, it. It gets worse. I did it with a really fluky polyester wadding in the middle, which took absolutely no <laughs> prisoners, and just shifted around all over the place. Yeah. Again, it's a bit like everything, isn't it? You use the best quality ingredients that you can afford. I was learning. Oh, I was learning. It. And, and quite often people will, will go and get what is known as upholstery wadding, which is quite thick. Yeah. Um, it's not. Quilter's wadding is thin, yeah. but don't be deceived by the thinness of it because it's warm. My favourite wadding is the 80-20, which we have here. Bamboo or cotton? Um, either or. I tend to get cotton because it's most readily available. Bamboo is quite a new it's new really thing. up and coming and yeah. the thing I really like because about Because it's sustainable. Bamboo, yeah, it's the sustainability. Yeah. It's the fastest growing thing out there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and it and it's it's big it's a it's a relatively modern yeah. thing. And also just like the eighty twenty is comparatively because we didn't ha they didn't have polyester yeah. quilt fabrics yeah. when they very first started making quilts. So. This is very true. There is, and some people will be traditional and just want wool. Yeah. And wool is fabulous. It's the most expensive wadding, but it's wool, it's a natural fibre, so it keeps you cool in the summer and keeps you warm in the winter, which is just lovely. And again, you know, it's like that thick, but you think, how can that possibly keep me warm? But it does. And it's got a weight to it as well, which just drapes beautifully on a bed. Now, our bamboo blend is a 50-50, and our cotton polyester is an 80-20. Yeah. Um, so they are all online if you would like to buy some. You will find on some manufacturers, they recommend that you that you wash your wadding before you use it. Yeah, that always makes me feel a bit it's anxious. A bit, yeah, it's a process. I've never, ever washed my wadding beforehand. Um, I treat my quilts when they're done as like a wool blanket, so they go on a very cool, gentle wash. Yeah. I don't wash them very often, to be no. fair. Um, and, yeah, and I tend to try and line dry them. I don't put them in the tumble dryer, but it has been known. Yeah. You know, I'm not precious about my quilts. I just so use Cornwall, them as blankets. My, my, um, my airing, my, I, I have to tumble dry. Because yes. it's Cornwall and it rains. You put something out on the washing line and there's only a certain part of the day where my washing line gets any sun. Yeah. And then, and then it rains. So um, generally, if it can't be tumble dried or just thrown over the, um, uh, the stair thing, yeah. what you call it, banisters, where the cat sits to smack me around the face. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, banister. That place, that yeah, place. that's the one. Yeah. What we do next, sorry Jane, we, we so, digress. With your walking foot, you can also do gentle curves. So like on this one, I'm going to accentuate this middle section that, that forms a circle. Um, what I also try and do when I'm quilting is I find, try and do a continuous line as much as possible. So I'll look at the pattern on my quilt and see how much I can do in a continuous line. So even though I see circles, yeah. maybe by starting on one side of the circle and going across to the other side of the circle... So starting on that side of the circle and then coming down to that one and then going down to the next one snaking rather across. than going round a circle and stopping. Nice. So I can go from the top all the way to the bottom and that way I don't have any ends to th sew in. Because that, again, that's another thing that, you know, if you've got loads of ends, it's a bit like, oh, you, I've got all of that job to do. Do you sew in all your ends? Um, I try to but I have been known to just finish it off and, and use this, the thread cutter. But that does leave little tufty threads at the back. Again, I feel if like you... It's if a it's, professional. Yeah. Do you, Jane? Have <laughs> you ever? Yeah. 
Is there anything you'd like to share with us? <laughs> <laughs> I do all sorts of things that you're not supposed to do if you follow the rules. No wonder you don't like it when we sell your samples. <laughs> oh, like, don't look at that too closely. I didn't tie every single thread in. So, yeah, you can do a very nice, gentle curve with your walking foot. And it's just taking your time and just moving the fabric. Just relax your shoulders down. Yeah, a little... there's a little bit sort of like self care with quilting. Sit, if you're going to sit, sit nice and comfortably on a comfortable chair and sit close. Sit so that the um, needle position is sort of like in the middle of your chest, okay. between your boobies, if you're a lady, so that you're central to your machine. Right. You might want to tilt your machine forward slightly, so you could put a book or something underneath your machine, so that oh. you're seeing your quilt like that. What about one of those door stoppers? Yeah, that things? would work. Anything really. Sometimes you might. These are all things to try to see if it makes you feel more comfortable. Because the, the tendency is when you're quilting, you get tense because you're like, oh, God, I'm quilting this. You sit, you start, you, nice hobby, yeah. you, love and enjoy. <laughs> you sit with your hands either side of your, ne your needle. So you're sitting like this. And the tendency is that you can start to bring your shoulders up. And that brings tension across here. So basically. So every 20 minutes or so, just stand up out of your chair, roll your shoulders back walk to the door and back or go and make a cup of tea, come back. Don't, don't think, right, I've started quilting this, I've got to get it quilted and finished. Well, I was going to Have regular breaks. someone brings you a cup of tea every now and then gives you a little shoulder massage. Well, that would be nice, yeah. That, but it, like it, does you be, it does you better to stand up, stretch your back, roll your shoulders and just maybe move a bit. Okay, and then get be, a shoulder Yeah, and then go and get a shoulder rub. Right. And deep breaths. And deep breath. And yes. Remember to breathe. <laughs> Not so much. It sounds so basic. Doesn't yeah. It? Remember to but breathe. you will, particularly when you start for the first time, you will hold your breath, and that adds to the tension, which adds to the tension in the back and in your shoulders. I, when I first started um, training for the Olympics, I had to learn to show jump. I was a happy hacker. I had a um, cart horse. Yeah. Who was not? He was built for comfort, not speed. Yeah. Was dear Oscar. Um, and probably would walk through things rather than jump them. Oh, I had to go back and, and repair and drill and, and sort out jumps that we'd just crashed through. <laughs> yeah, he was, it was like a demolition derby with us. But I then had, I went, so it was like I went from a tractor to a Ferrari. And my show jumper, bless her, was the fastest. We used to get penalties for going too fast. Yeah. It was ridiculous, and um, and I just remember doing a round, a show jumping round, and coming out panting. Here. Why am I so? I hadn't breathed. No, held I, your breath I was the whole so, time because she was so fast, and I was learning, and it was so terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, it it's um, a needle with quite a big iron. I should have brought mine from the street, from my workroom. I've got one in my roundy roundy gadgety thing. I found one here. This will oh. do. Um, so. When you start quilting and when you finish off quilting, give yourself quite a long length of thread. I was just going to say we like a long length. You do? Then, yeah. Take it to the back and give it a tug. And it will bring the loop, I don't know if you can see that, it can bring the loop of that top thread up. Put your needle in the back of that and pull it through to the back. Then tie the two threads just ordinary tie, make sure they're tight, once, twice. And then you can do it with both threads if you've got an eye that's big enough. I don't think it'll do it with this needle, we'll try it. I might um, have to do one. It's niggering because I was trying to fix some electric fencing the other day and, um, and Josh said, why don't you do a such and such a knot? And I just looked at him and he goes, all oh, right, can't tie a knot, tie a lot. <laughs> it's just it's a, it's that knot if you can't tie other knots it's the knot it's the only knot that you can no, tie just yeah. use that one so take your thread onto your needle put your needle into the back of your work just where it's come the threads come out and then go into the back backing and maybe into the wadding take your needle across and just give it a bit of a pull 
And then with your scissors, and I brought my scissors, yes I did. Just snip it quite close to the fabric and then the, the end will disappear into the back of your quilt. And so you won't have any ends showing. So you work your way round quilting as you go. Um, free motion quilting, slightly different. Again, you're going to need to change your foot on your machine to a different foot. Now, there's lots of different names for these feet. Um, they're called embroidery feet, darning feet. You've actually got three types in here. I don't like to show off, but yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how to use any of them. <laughs> they're thinking. embroidery feet, really, or... And they're, they're a cir they can be a circle, like this one. They can be metal, they can be plastic. Sometimes they're more of um, an oval shape. How do they differ from darning ones? Well, they're all the... I think the darning is the same. People use them now for embroidery, whereas they used, used to use them for darning. People just don't yeah. darn anymore. No, I don't think they do. Or you can get one that's an open toe, which is... Um, like a horseshoe shape. The open toe is my favourite, Jane. Yeah, these are nice because you can see better. If I had a choice, I would choose this one you every do. time. You do have a choice. My machine comes with one that's a closed toe and it's more of an oval shape, but it's clear plastic, so it's easy to see. So you fix that on. You don't have to um, worry too much about an arm that sits over the needle, although some of them do have. So again, just refer to your... Um, machines manual and you may have to drop your feed dogs um, again there'll be a switch on your machine that drops the feed dogs down and the feed dogs are the grippy bits yeah now you don't have to drop your feed dogs this is where it gets complicated yeah isn't it? yeah um, the thing with an adarning and an embroidery foot if I lower that foot it doesn't press down on the fabric it doesn't hold the fabric together it just glides across the top so you can move it around anyway so you don't so need... your feed dogs don't really do anything okay um but again just check it on your manual of your machine because some may say if you don't drop your feed dogs you're going to void your warranty but it doesn't to me it makes no difference and i don't bother f dropping my feed dogs on my machine but then i've had my machine for more than three years so it's out of its warranty so <laughs> Well, exactly. There may be some clogging of the mechanism or something like that. I don't know, because I don't know the full mechanics of the machine. But oh, Gary. I'm just going to tell you that I don't drop mine. But okay. your manufacturer might recommend that you do. So keep hold of your top thread in your hand. Drop your needle into your fabric. And then lift the needle out of the fabric. Make sure that your foot's engaged. Sometimes it's difficult to tell because of the quilting and just pull that top thread so it brings the bobbin thread up to the top. Now, you can, chain, you can have a different colour thread on your bobbin to your quilt top, um, but just try and make sure that they are the same weight or that your bobbin thread is a lighter weight. I don't think your machine will like it if you've got a heavier weight on the bottom and a lightweight thread on the top. And by that weight, I mean the thickness. So, I tend to piece with a 60 weight thread or a 50 and then when I'm quilting I'll use a 50 or a 40 weight thread because it's thicker. Okay. And again, it goes back to this, you know, we're using it as a decorative thing as well as a functional. If you are learning and you don't necessarily want to highlight it, yeah. what weight thread would you use then? Just use the, the same thread as you use for your piecing. Okay. So then you take your two threads and you put them behind and underneath your foot and you drop your, your needle back into your work where they came out and um, drop your foot. Just make sure you drop your foot because if you don't drop your foot it doesn't engage the bobbin thread and so it won't, so it won't you bring just, the thread up. You just up. go up and down, up and yeah. down, don't you? And well, the thing with your walking foot is, uh, your embroidery foot, free motion embroidery foot, excuse me, is it won't, if I don't, if I don't touch my fabric, it's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to stay on the spot. Yeah. So you have to move the fabric. So again, it's practice. 
you can do all sorts of designs within an area. You can do um, a wiggly squiggly. The slower you go, the smaller your stitch. The faster you go, the longer the stitch. So again, it's practicing and finding what's comfortable for you. Finding what works best for you and the way that your machine works. And you can do all sorts of designs within different areas of your fabric, depending on what you want to do. And it's one of the good things to try when you're doing free motion, when you're doing um, practicing, is to try and write your name because you have a muscle oh, yeah. memory of your name. Okay. And it's, this is what it's all about with free motion, is creating a muscle memory of the movement and the speed to which is comfortable. Now you'll see um, tutorials and sometimes demonstrations on TikTok and YouTube and things like that. And it looks like they're going quite fast. It's been speeded up. Don't think you have to go that fast. And you can just have a play within, and this, again, the Cheats panel lets you, you'll have an area that you can work in. So you can just practice little bits on your fabric to get different designs. <coughs> Perfect. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, we're a healthy bunch, aren't we, today? Mm. So that's the quilting. And all I can tell you about quilting is it's practice. Practice, practice, practice. So that having makes a, a really short guide. Yeah. <laughs> that's all it says. That's all it says in there is practice. Yes, You'll open it in big letters. <laughs> practice. Um, so having a cheats panel like this is quite a nice thing to have to practice on. We've only got four left. Yeah. The rest have gone. Amazing. Um, and a lot of the um, backing fabrics as, uh, that have been loaded up as bolt ends have gone as well. A lot of those. So if you are looking, please do not. On this one here, Hang I on. did very simple in the ditch quilting. Now, with a hexagon, I thought, oh, yeah, I'll just be able to go up and down the rows. That'll be straightforward. But actually, with a hexagon, you, you'll need to come back. So you get, I went up there and came back down and then went along and up there came back down. Don't worry about going over what you've already quilted. Could you not just go down, sort of down... Across, across and down, across. You'll and get down, to a point because I've down. wondered whether I could just go across uh, diagonally. But if I go across diagonally, if I went across diagonally like this and on that one, I'd still have this one here. That well, I'm no, so I meant if you come down, go yeah. down. Yeah. Put, can you put your finger up? Yeah, so go down. Yeah. Now across. Yeah. And down. Yeah. And then across the other way. No, 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 come back on yourself. This way. Yeah, and then down. Yeah. Across. You still, when you come to this side, you're still going to go down that step, that side again. Oh! I tried it all. I did. I tried every which way to see if I could do it on a continuous line, and you can't. Oh, it's like a proper puzzle. Yeah. If you don't, if you didn't want to have a double line, you'd end up with threads to t lots of threads to tie in. But I don't think that you can really see on mine where I've gone over the line twice. No, I've looked. I look, and I did actually look close on that. Yeah. So, and. I don't know if you can see it on here, but I've done free motion flowers in some of the hexagons. Of just a, just have. the odd one, just for the Could fun of it, because I could. And that's the thing with this, you, you can try all sorts of different designs. You know, use your walking foot and try echo quilting inside and then maybe carry it on so it goes like a spiral inside. As a little aside for our lovely viewers, mm -hmm. just just to give them an understanding. Occasionally, I will give Jane like a smaller, what I think is going to be a smaller show for her, <laughs> so that if we've had a really busy time and she's done overtime or what have you, and I'm like, I'll give, you a, I'll give Jane a nice easy show. And then she's like, you could have just. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I've done some flowers <laughs> and I've done this. And I've done this. Like, Jane. I like to give you value for money, Natasha. The bare minimum <laughs> was all that was requested. <laughs> For a simple how-to. Oh no, and then I did a map of the world in this one. <laughs> Free motion. <laughs> Not quite that bad. <laughs> yeah. But it's always appreciated. So, for the binding, once you've quilted as much or as little as you want to, you could get away with simply just quilting around your blocks through and that would be enough to hold the three layers together. Right. Again, 
Um, with your wadding, I think the rule is um, minimum apart four inches, generally speaking. All waddings are different. It will say on the wadding, yeah, sometimes it will say. There's some that you can quilt up to ten inches apart. And yes. You go, wow. Yeah. Wow. I'll have me a bit of that. Yeah. So. Um, Again, just look at the, the wadding. We don't have any instructions with the one that we send because sometimes you'll go to a shop and they'll have, you know, like the insole bright that comes with the, the set yes. of instructions with it. They come with that and you'll get that piece with your wadding. But we don't get anything on our piece of wadding that we have here. No, no, we so don't. So I would say minimum four inches, yeah. maybe more six. Um, um, so sewing through the, along the ditch, along your blocks can be all you need to do that, to hold yeah. the three layers together. Um, I have a little bit of housekeeping for you. There mm -hmm. is only one of the extra wide bolt ends left. Wow. If you need bolt ends, as in a lot of fabric, to back your quilts in at an insanely good price that is beautiful, beautiful fabric, check out our bolt ends anyway. Yes, because they they're standard widths and it's joining them together. And why not get two different ones and join them and make a piece backing? Beautiful. But often they're three metre pieces with at least 25% off. Yeah. If you want your back to be as, as beautiful as your front, go and check that out. So, the binding. Now, we've done edge-to-edge -edge binding before where you take a two-and-a-half-inch strip of fabric, fold it in half, attach the raw edges to the side of your quilt and bring it to the front mm. or the back and hand-stitch it down. Mm -hmm. And that is the traditional way of binding your quilt. But sometimes you have enough fabric and you want to bring it from the back of your quilt to the front. Mm. So you would quilt your quilt as you would do if you were doing um, edge binding or not. And then you're ready to start with your backing of your binding. <clears throat> now, if you wanted to make your binding act as a border, so for example, if I wanted to have the back of my quilt come forward but I wanted more of it to show than that quarter of an inch like mm. say like that Ooh. just remember that you will need to have that bit of wadding in there okay don't cut it all back because in my instructions for the reverse quilting I said about cutting my wadding to the edge of the quilt but if you want to have a wider border if you want to have it wider yeah. um you'll need to leave that bit of wadding to so do that. So you're going to use the wadding as a guide then? Yeah, basically. Okay. Um, what you need to do is you need to make sure that your backing fabric is completely out of the way. And what might be a good little thing to think about is maybe not quilting right to the edge so you've got a bit of manoeuvrability to get that wadding out of the way. Oh, OK. Um, you can pin it. You could even press it out of the way if you wanted to. Um, you can then rotary cut it, but actually I tend to, for this method, I would use my scissors just so that I can make sure that I haven't caught uh, okay. my backing. Because yeah, yeah. I've done it, I've cut into my backing before now with my rotary cutter. Um, so so just trimming it to the edge. Apart from saying words that you can't say in church, what would you do? Um, I've used um, a bit of bond and repair, just on the what would be the reverse of my Mm. backing fabric put a bit of bond and ironed a bit of bond and repair on and that's held the fabric together enough and then you're going to stitch over it anyway so it would be okay okay right it's not the end of the world no okay. and you can stitch you could stitch it make darn okay. it put a if it's really bad put a piece of fabric over it that's <laughs> what i'd be saying darn it darn it <laughs> or words to that effect so yeah trim your wadding back so you've moved your backing out of the way and trim your wadding back so that it's level for this method so it's level with the edge of your quilt and I can feel you see I can feel the, the backing there so I've just got to be careful but as I say if you want to make it wider as a border then just think about how um, much wadding you've got and how much how wide you want your border to be. I hadn't thought about doing it that way. I like that. Yeah, because you can. Nice. You can really make it a feature. Framing, it's like picture framing, isn't it? Yeah. It really can, you know, change a change a thing. So, um, 
you need to think about how wide you want your binding to be because it can be as wide as you like. I mean, I can still fold that over and I could bring it and it could come right over, but you're going to lose some of your work by doing that, which is why you would want to leave your wadding to then bring that over and that will still come to the edge there and not hide, but give you that extra there. So for this method, I cut um, the fabric to an inch because I need, you have to think about this and you have to think about it in a, in a sort of like weird way because you've got your half inch seam allowance but it's not just your seam allowance because we fold it over by a quarter. You've got to take into account the depth of your quilt. So we give a quarter of an inch for the depth of the quilt as well. Uh, okay. So that's what that... Because when we do a half inch seam allowance, it's a quarter of an inch either side. Yes. But actually it's your quarter of an inch plus the width <coughs> of the height of your quilt. Yeah, you're working 3D, aren't you? Yeah. So it's easy to forget. So I just cut mine at an inch. You could cut it narrower. I wouldn't cut it less than quarter of an inch, uh, less than half an inch rather, because you will only get a very fine um, binding on it then. It's time for a new blade in this, in this cutter, Tash, I think. Okay. And you'll do it's, it's that. It's done a lot. <laughs> I was going to say, it's been very busy. Um, you'll do that all around your quilt to the size that you want it. So I'm just going to do two sides for demonstration purposes. Okay. I'm just going to trim this down. And you see with using the scissors, I can feel when the fabric is not out of the way. Um, you okay, feel, yeah. you, you've got more sort of feel to the the fabric. You can see on the back here, if I show you, I've managed to do continuous lines on the back of this. Oh, look, it's beautiful. But you can see where, when you stitch on the spot and just cut the thread, you get tufty bits. These won't matter because they'll go behind in the binding. But if you've got that in the middle, you'd have a thread showing. Right. But that's quite a nice, that's quite a nice pattern because I've just gone around all the curves there. So you've got your two sides, you've trimmed them to an inch and what you're going to do now is you're going to press it over towards the quilt top by a quarter of an inch. I'm just going to do two sides of this so that we can get the corner in and you, you'll see the, the really effect. That's thing isn't it? Yeah. Um, Anne says morning for a chilly rainy day in Cyprus. On Oh no, we've done that one. Uh, hang on, add another one. Uh, Cynthia says, greetings. I've started one EPP hexagon quilt six years ago and I'm still working on it. You're yeah. way much, much better. I mean, we don't like to brag. But... Just quicker. Um, and yes, they do have wisteria in America and you have to keep it trimmed up and the blooms hang down. I did think that I'd seen, you know, the, the southern, big southern white houses that they have in their films. I felt like I'd seen those with wisteria on, but then I didn't want to think I'd got myself muddled. Oh, hang on. Cynthia says that for small projects, we're talking um, things you put on your fingers for free motion. Yeah. This is genius. She said, I use a product called Sort Quick on her fingertips. It's the stuff secretaries and bankers use to help oh, them yes, sort. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, that's yeah. jolly clever. They look like, they're like rubberized thimbles, aren't they? That... Yeah. And she uses gardening gloves that have rubber on them. Yeah. And she said, I, um, I quilt my quilts on the domestic sewing machine, so I usually do straight or slightly curved lines, so practicing free motion. I think it's very, it's a great place. Uh, to yeah, start, I think it? some people can get a little bit overwhelmed by it. And of course, you, like I say, you see demonstrations of it and they do it virtually perfectly and they do it quite quickly and oh they want to see some of mine jane yeah feel much better well about they would see some of the things that i did when i first started they're not you know but my quilt's finished and i'm not giving it to anybody else it's for me so i don't mind that it's not quite the you know perfect so you'll have your corners folded like so oh, oh, hang on, hang on. and go Please over switch that over yep you see that 
you've got quarter of an inch <coughs> folded in and that's folded over. You'll bring that corner towards your quilt top to find so it's sort of at right angles to your quilt, so it forms a triangle. You want to be careful that the triangle edge sits at the point of the quilt underneath. If I run my nail, you can see the edge of the quilt there and there. You don't want to pull it too tightly because it'll pull the quilt up and you won't get a nice square mitre. And then you bring these two edges into the middle and that line should fold. You might need a little bit of manipulation with your fabric to form a nice, neat hmm, mitre like so. Now you can, um, <clears throat> you can sew this down with more or less any stitch you like really to create the edge. You can use your um, slip stitch like you would by hand to hold it down and then you wouldn't see any line of stitching. You can pin your corners down once you've got them, once you're happy with how they meet and they lie flat and nice and crisp for you. You might want to just give it a little press just to fold it in and pop a pin in it just to hold the two edges. <laughs> Someone's just asked, when is the quilt on the wall demo please? Now, this is it. This is, this is it because <laughs> that quilt on the wall is a cheetah panel. So you can buy that cheetah panel if they haven't all gone. Yeah. And this is, these are, so Kim, this is, this is the how to, this is the how to. This is it. Um, we've just used a different panel so that it didn't eat into the numbers that we could bring for you. I think we might go close up and show that corner again. Okay, go on then. Because I know what my hands, my hands are big and I might have just gone over the top <laughs> of it. My hands are big. <laughs> so we've folded that corner over, making sure that we've still got all of our quilt underneath and it's not folded over on top of the quilt. So the fold is just in front of the corner and they're at right angles to the quilt. And then you bring those edges in so they sit on the edge there, like so, and that makes a nice crisp point on your quilt. And then pop oh, a pin in. That's so nice. Helen uh, says that when she gets fed up with her quilt finishing, she sometimes just does a, a rag quilt edging to give it a totally different look. Yeah, that's nice. And they get really snuggly too. Yeah. And then you'll stitch that down, and you can stitch it down with your machine with a straight stitch. You could use a blanket stitch. You could use a zigzag, or you could slip stitch it by hand, whatever you prefer, and that finishes it off. Perfect. So it comes from the back to the front. Jane, that's genius. Thank you so much. So it's, it's, not a difficult, it's not a difficult method, it's just slightly different from what you're used to. And that is the method that you've used on the back wall there. Yeah, and because... Get those, in, the details in the patterns today. Yeah. Now... When I cut the panel for this, I cut it to, the cheats panel I cut to 36 inches. Right. So that I got enough fabric on the backing to bring it forward. I didn't keep them both at a metre. Okay. I made that top one slightly it's smaller, smaller, so, so you it's had 36 that leeway. square. Yeah. Okay. Which means that you've got offcuts to make a matching... Well, um, you don't have much offcuts, because of course you meet your top is... A meter, so that's about forty inches by forty-two ish. So there's not much off cut. You there's could use enough. it for a binding or a handle. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, it is. It's not going to get wasted. No, it's always a tiny little pouch. Yeah, you could maybe even use the off cut bits to do English paper piece hexagons. Oh, Colette says, I find the size of my quilts, mostly double or king size, too overwhelming to do by machine, so she does them by hand. Mm. My word. We see, people that hand quilt, they get quite quick at it. Because they do it all, it's again, it's this practice, isn't it? The more you do it, the easier it gets. Yeah. And, and I know people that can hand quilt 
and hand, well, I know people that can hand piece quicker than people that can machine piece. That's nuts, isn't it? Yeah. I guess it's, it's practice, isn't it? It's mm. any kind of practice. You do Sorry, it. Sorry, yeah. chair again. Yeah. That's amazing. So, yeah. Um, you'll be glad to know there's been some highbrow conversation. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, stupid going on. <laughs> Lo got the wrong Facebook feed and added on her, what has five toes and is not your foot? <laughs> My foot! <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> um, I, but she did say it was meant for a friend, not for on here. Um, so that's all good. We've done this quilt demo now. So, Kim, um, that's, yeah, Kim sorted. That's good. Um, anyone tried random quilting rules? I can't uh, get on with them. Rules or rulers, Pat? I think possibly rulers. Okay. Again, Pat, it's, it's practice. And it's. It's hard, isn't it? You'll go to a, to a quilt show and you'll see someone demoing in them and they make it look really easy. But the number of hours they've put in... Yes, they yep. practice all the time. So Josh is in a band, several mm -hmm. bands, and they've got a battle of the bands coming up. And one of the band members said, oh, I just can't get this thing, you know, what, what, can, you, what, what can you do to help me? <laughs> it's practice. Mm. It's just your own personal practice. That is That's all. Anything. It is. It's like when you and learn to play really the piano. Boring reply. Yeah. But it's true. Yeah. It's like anything you do. When we were children, you know, we didn't just get up and walk, did we? We practiced it. We. And we fell down. We fell down. And we, and we heads, got yeah. And, and we, we got up and, and yeah. we got up again. Because and riding how else a bike. Were we going to reach the biscuits, Jane. Yeah, riding a bike, learning to write, all of those things we practiced, practiced, practiced. You know, and Freddie I think as said, adults, sorry, we forget did. that and we just think we can do things straight away. Freddie said to me that he's really excited because he's got his pen licence. So this is a new thing. We're doing. Yeah. I say new. In fact, it's probably been going for like 20 years. But um, when, he's done, when he's done his handwriting neatly, consistently, yeah. he's allowed to use a pen rather than pencil. So he's super wow. excited. He's got his pen licence and his pen now given to him at school. So he's very mm. excited about that. But I also read a very interesting thing the other day, which said, if you just give children computers and phones and things like that to play on, then they won't get bored and the writer won't start writing. No. The artist won't start doodling. No. This and is it's it. just so right, isn't it? We won't find those other crafts. That Somebody are so was rewarding. saying, I was reading something the other day and they said children aren't allowed to be bored anymore. And that's when they lose their imagination. And like mm. you just said, mm. we will lose our artists. Yeah. Because they won't have that time to just look out the window and daydream and imagine the clouds and thoughts, you know, stories won't come to them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, Kim says, could you make yesterday's pouches with um, old-timey metal zips? Yesterday's pouch. We that was zip in that, was it? It was it the ones before. What did I do on Monday? What did I make on Monday, Jane? I can't remember. Oh, we did the oh, yes, flower pots. Thingy thingies. Do you mean last week's um, ones? These ones, the, these lovely nesting ones. Do you mean I these ones? I love this. I love this little yeah, dinky one. Yeah, you can. Of course you can. Yeah. 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 Just, just don't put your needle near the metal. That's yeah. all. Yeah, because it'll. Yeah. 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 Oops. Absolutely. Um, Jane, it's Wednesday. It is Wednesday. That's it. It's gone midday. Oh gosh. It's time for lunch. Yes. Yes. Thank you ever so much. Next week. What are you going to do next week, Jane? I don't know yet. It's not that we actually keep looking at the door for the arrival of some fabric, <laughs> fabric that would to be really do great something to use. with. I've got, got an idea that's okay. germinating here, but we'll see what happens with if any deliveries come in the meantime. Mm. Yeah. Some lovely it's ideas. lovely, isn't it? Because it's a surprise to all of us. <laughs> you say lovely, I say possibly the most I don't think it's lovely, it's really I have ever had seen. with regards to pirates, planes, oh. and anything really beginning with P. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm. We'll yes. come up with something. There will be something to show you. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, Lo, yes, the half meter heavens have been done. We've done them earlier. They're on the front of the desk there. Um, Beautiful. 
I will pop a little reel up there so that you can see those later, again, if you miss them. Um, thank you, Jane. You're very welcome. Just excellent and wonderful. And um, we will see you all on Monday. Look out for your Friday newsletter. Oh, I'm going to put some goodies in there this week. Oh, wonderful. Just you wait. Just you wait, Jane. <laughs> Sounds like such a threat. Just you wait. Jane. Just the you deals wait. I'm going to do in there. Just oh, you wait. Wonderful. Just you wait. Alrighty, peeps. We'll see you Monday. Take care. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.